Welcome to Inspecting Equipment eLearning Module. As an operator, it is your responsibility to conduct vehicle and equipment inspections. Inspections play a crucial role in reducing workplace hazards and providing a safer and more efficient workplace. This course on Inspect Equipment for Serviceability will help you understand the importance of conducting machine inspections and the steps involved. Equipment inspections have both financial and safety benefits. Before operating or transporting any equipment, you must have the skills and knowledge to effectively complete your work without causing damage to the equipment or environment and ensuring the safety of all personnel. Only operate equipment that you are trained and authorized to operate. Always follow site procedures and instructions. Report all hazards and faults. In most cases, information about your task will be made available by your supervisor during a shift briefing. Information can come from a variety of sources such as other operators, original equipment manufacturer manuals, or subject matter experts. Make sure that you understand the information you are given so you can apply it to your work. Before conducting a pre-start inspection, identify hazards using a take 5 or other personal risk assessment method and manage the risks. Check the equipment pre-start inspection book for information and check the machine for information, out of service, or danger tags. Conducting a pre-start inspection will help identify damage to the frame, body, or housing, loose, bent, or missing railings or steps, missing, or damaged safety guards, damaged mirrors, windows, doors, hatches, and latches, damaged tires, or tracks, low fluid levels, environmental concerns, such as leaks, excessive smoke, noise, or vibration. Make sure that you have accessed, read and understood all the necessary information so you can work safely, effectively and efficiently, including relevant legislation, international and national standards and industry codes of practice, organizational and site policies and work procedures, equipment manufacturer specifications and instructions, work instructions and risk assessments, diagrams or sketches, site plans or maps, and safety data sheets. Check the tools and materials you require to make sure they are safe to use and fit for purpose. If you identify any faults or damage, tag the item out of service and report the issue to your supervisor. If materials or consumable items are running low, report it to your supervisor. Don't leave it for someone else. If you are using any chemicals, make sure they have been approved for use on site and that you have access to the appropriate safety data sheet. Always read the label on chemical containers and use strictly in accordance with site procedures and the manufacturer guidelines. Check the equipment or vehicle before every shift or handover. Make sure the machine is on a firm, flat surface and isolated against unexpected startup or movement before starting the inspection. Make sure to conduct the inspection in the same direction every time. Complete the paperwork as you go. Make sure that accurate reporting of the inspection is made in accordance with company policy. Using a printed checklist can help to ensure all items are inspected correctly every time in line with the original equipment manufacturer manual. A pre-start inspection is conducted in three steps. 1. Conduct a walk-around inspection. 2. Inspect cab and controls. And 3. Conduct post-start checks. Step 1. Walk-around inspection. Click each of the buttons to see how to evaluate your equipment's condition. Your machine's outside appearance can tell you a lot about its condition. Look for debris, damage and leaks that could indicate an issue. Tires and tracks need to be in good condition in order to maintain control of the machine. Check the tires and treads for wear, missing wheel nuts, loose parts or damage. Ensure tracks are free of material buildup, correct tension and have no signs of wear or damage. A thorough walk-around inspection also includes a look at the engine bay, including radiator, cooling system, drive motor and engine. Look for leaks and damage and loose or damaged hoses. Check engine fluids, such as oil and coolant. Arrange for replenishment if required. Step 2. Cabs and controls inspection. Click the buttons to see tips on what to check in the cab. Make sure you can comfortably operate the equipment by adjusting your seat and mirrors. This will maximize your visibility and control during operation. Always fasten your seatbelt before starting equipment. As you put it on, you should also check the seatbelt and mounting hardware's condition. Check the two-way radio is operational. 
check that the cabin has effective seals and air conditioning to protect you from airborne dust and fumes. Sound the horn once to indicate your intention to start the equipment. Wait 5 to 10 seconds for persons to move away before starting the engine. Check all of the console's lights, indicators and warning systems for operational effectiveness. You can also check that the vehicle's lights are working. Respond to alarms and indicators, and rectify faults that you are authorized to fix in accordance with site procedures and manufacturer guidelines. Isolate defective equipment and attach an out-of-service tag. Report damage of defective equipment according to site procedures. Step 3. Post-start checks. Click the buttons to see what to look for after starting the equipment. Use your eyes, mirrors and cameras to make sure your operating area is clear of personnel and other hazards before moving your equipment. Sound the horn before moving off. Two blasts for forward. Three blasts for reverse. Wait for 5 to 10 seconds before moving equipment. Cycle through the machine's controls, including any attachment or auxiliary system controls. Check that the full range of controls are operating correctly. Consult the original equipment manufacturer manual to see how long you should let your equipment warm up before operation. While conducting your pre-start, remember to look, smell, listen and feel. Refer to the OEM manual to check equipment specifications, limitations and normal operating parameters. Determine material quantity requirements such as fuel and oil capacity, and spare part numbers. Understand how to respond to warning systems and alarms. Respond, record and report faults according to your company's policies and procedures. This will include Attaching out-of-service tag Completing appropriate documents Reporting the fault to the appropriate personnel When completing records and reports, make sure they are easy to read, concise and clearly reference the items that require repair or replacement. Good communication and teamwork is an important part of working safely and efficiently. At work you may need to relate to people from a range of cultural and ethnic backgrounds with varying knowledge and abilities. Always be respectful. Listen carefully, speak clearly and use questions to identify and confirm requirements and share information. Communication types include verbal, written and signals. Everyone should contribute to ensuring that their workplace is as safe and efficient as it can be. To play your part in continuous improvement. Evaluate your own actions and make judgments about performance and necessary improvements. Respond to change, make recommendations and provide feedback. Contribute to workplace responsibilities, such as site environmental and sustainability frameworks and management systems. Speak up when you see something that is not right. In summary, as an equipment operator you have a primary responsibility to ensure your equipment is safe and in good condition before you begin work. Equipment inspections play a crucial role in reducing workplace hazards, equipment damage and injuries. Insufficient or inadequate maintenance can cause serious damage to people, equipment and the environment. There will now be a short quiz to test your understanding of this module. Which of the following would you do first, before starting equipment operations? What would you use to help identify faults on equipment? Select all that apply. What would you do if you find a fault during a pre-start inspection? Select all that apply. What must you do before using chemicals? Select all that apply. Which of the following can help you to work safely and efficiently? Select all that apply. The OEM provides information on equipment components, specifications, capacity and general operating principles. What are the potential implications of not attending a shift briefing? Select all that apply. 